Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at using Action Cable to do a little bit of canvas drawing between two sessions. Now this is going to be uh, a pretty basic drawing app, but it should be uh, pretty educational as well if you're looking to have, uh, you know, real-time drawing or something like that, this is a good place to start. So to get started, we're going to do a Rails New, call it Video and then we can uh, just wait for this to finish up. Okay, now that's done, let's go ahead and let's CD into the video, do a code dot, open this up in VS Code, and I'll leave that on the other screen. We then want to do a Rails G controller pages home, oops, home, uh, because we need a home page, of course, and then we need to do a Rails G channel, and we'll call this channel the drawable channel, or maybe just the draw channel, might make, might make more sense. Uh, we can now go ahead and do a Rails S because I think we're pretty much done in the console here. We can now come over to the side. We have to do our routes. So we can just set this real quick. Uh, we need to make sure that the root is set to the pages controller home action. And then we need to make sure, and I'm gonna use GitHub Copilot for this, that we mount the uh, action cable server. So for this, it's just mount action cable dot server, arrow sign, and then slash cable. The reason why I use GitHub Copilot for that is because, quite honestly, I don't remember how to do it. <laughs> so uh, there we go. And now we have our home page. I'm going to hit Control Shift I here because we're going to be using the console a little bit here. Uh, and now we can come over to our app, views, pages, and our home page. And on our home page, what we want to do is create a canvas. So I'll just say can oops, canvas, tab it over. And then inside this canvas, we need to give this an ID equal to canvas. We need to give this a width equal to, let's say 500, a height equal to 500, and then we should be good to go there. So we, we, we create that, and then if we use our select tool, we can see that it does in fact exist. So now let's come over to our uh, channels, our draw channel. I'm gonna double click that so it stays open. We can actually close the home page for now. Uh, and then I'm gonna come over to the JavaScript channels and the draw channel. This is where we're gonna be doing a lot of our magic. So for our draw channel, the first thing we wanna do is say, hey, if we're here, we want to listen to the canvas. To listen to the canvas, that of course is going to be a function down here. Uh, let's actually put it up here. It's going to be a function where we say, all right, we need to listen to the canvas. So the first thing we need to do is, uh, that's actually the wrong function. That's a spoiler for a future video. Never mind that you just saw that. Um, well, first thing we need to do is we need to say that this canvas is equal to document get element by ID canvas. And of course we could be doing this through stimulus. Uh, it really depends on how you want to do it. I think in this case, it probably makes sense to just do this inside of the draw channel. Uh, but we have like mounted this stuff in stimulus before. And then we need to grab the context. This is pretty standard stuff. If you're dealing with, uh, if you're dealing with like, um, canvases in, in HTML. And then we're gonna do this this little trick where because we're gonna have a local canvas and the canvas from whoever is also drawing, we're just gonna say that the remote canvas is equal to whatever that canvas is. This allows us to apply our changes a little bit differently. Uh, we can then come down here and we can say for uh, the three events we expect to have, and I'm gonna full screen this actually, uh, I'll hit F11. We're going to uh, call this dot canvas dot add event listener for mouse down, mouse up, and mouse move. And then for each of those, we call a function, which is going to be this dot start drawing dot bind this, this dot stop drawing, and this dot draw. So let's go ahead and let's define what each of those are. We'll come down here. We'll say for start drawing. What we want to do is we want to say uh, that this is drawing is set to true. This dot last X is equal to the event dot offset X, which is something coming from the uh, canvas itself. We can then say we want to do a uh, last cent, which is going to be equal to a time dot now, basically, or a date dot now. I do have to add a semi or a comma there. And then what we can also do is we can say if we're in here and we've called start drawing, we want to do a perform. So we can say this dot perform draw where the X is the event dot offset X and the Y is the event dot offset Y. And then we can also pass in a state of start. So what does this dot perform do? Well, if we save this, we come over here, click on the console, refresh the page. Uh, we'll get an error here for trying to bind this. Uh, so this is where we're getting our error. 
Uh, and the reason for that is we don't have these functions yet. So what I'm gonna do is for now, we're gonna comment these out because I wanna get a different error. Uh, we can refresh. And now if I click, uh, it's actually going to give us an error down here where it says unable to process draw channel. Uh, and then it tells us what the, the stuff was. So what this means is when we call this dot perform, it's actually performing this, this draw method in our draw channel. So we have to come up to our draw channel and we have to create a def draw method. We can do that. We can then say action cable dot server dot broadcast to the draw channel, which is what we're going to stream from in our subscribed method. So we're going to say stream from draw channel. And then down here, we broadcast to this draw channel, the data. Now we have to come into here and we have to have a received function or a received method. And then in this received method, this is where we handle whenever we get data back. So we are broadcasting that we started a draw event here and down here we're gonna be handling what happens when we actually do the draw event. So for this, we can do a quick little check where we say, uh, if we get a state equal to start, which is a magic string, which is obviously not great, but for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just hard code a string in here. If we get a start string, we're then gonna say that the uh, last remote X is equal to the X that we provided, and the last remote Y is equal to the Y that we provided. Because you have to think about it like this, this is the data that the uh, receivers are all getting. So you're all in this room drawing on this board, you pass in your X and Y for where you started drawing and then everyone else has to say okay there's a remote and their last x and last y was here now this isn't going to scale too well because we're not using like users for this uh, you would want to use a, a, like user accounts uh, and the way you can get access to like your current user is in your uh, what is it it's going to be in your channels your application and then your connection channel and i actually have the snippet prepared uh, basically you have to say identified by current user connect the current user and then you can do a, a find verified user by using the uh, env warden dot user something like this would work with a device i believe so that's just uh something to keep a note of we'll be covering that in like a future tutorial for this one i just want to keep it simple it's not going to scale well it's just a way for you to see how these uh action cable channels work so after we have this uh start draw we're going to come up here we're going to uncomment the stop drawing because this is another one that's pretty easy to do. Down here in our received data, we're gonna have a, if we stopped drawing, and for this one, we're gonna do the same thing. And then up here, we need to create this stop drawing method. So we'll do this, comma. And then in this stop drawing, what we wanna do is pretty much what it says right here. So if we stop drawing, we wanna say is drawing is false. We want to set our last X and our last Y. And then we want to perform a draw method, just like here where we perform this uh, draw method. But this time we're passing in the stop uh, uh, state. So that takes care of the stop drawing. The last thing we have to do now is say, what happens if we're moving our mouse? And this is where a lot of the, the logic happens. So in our uh, draw event here, we are now moving our mouse. We need to handle some stuff. First thing we want to handle is if the uh, if we've stopped drawing. So if this is drawing is false, then just return. Then we want to do a check to see if the date dot now minus this dot last descent, which we set up here and up here uh, is greater than 10. That means it's been at least 10 milliseconds since we have uh, done something. So we're just going to do this. Oops. Uh, there we go. We're going to say we want to send the coordinates to the server every 10 sec every 10 milliseconds. Time dot now returns the current time in milliseconds. And then if this is true, we then want to do a perform and say that the state is drawing. And then after we have done this, we need to reset our timer here. So that's where we do our perform. Now we have to actually draw our data. So how do we do this? Oh, well, we can come down here and call this dot draw data. So your receivers are gonna get like a choppier version of this. Uh, it's just the nature of how you wanna handle this. You can get rid of this, this limit here. Uh, it's just then you're gonna be sending a bunch of data to the clients. And uh, the other thing you could do is maybe like copy your canvas when you do this, but that seems like it would be expensive. So this is how I did it. Now I've never done like a production 
Canvas before, so I'm sure there's smarter ways to like stream this data. Uh, it's just in this case, this is what I came up with. So now we're gonna do our draw data. And to draw our data, the first thing we have to do is grab our, uh, oops, not, a, not that, that's for a different uh, tutorial. Uh, first thing we have to do is grab the uh, line join. We then set the line cap to be round. This is just to like style what our pen tool looks like. We can then, uh, let's do a comma right here. We can then come down here and say, we want the context to begin the path, which is how we actually, uh, this is where we start from. Uh, we then want to do a, uh, we want to go to the old position, wherever we just were. And then we want to say from that old position, move to this. So this is where you're getting like your, uh, you're sort of like estimating what the path was. But like if within 10 milliseconds, I jitter up and down a little bit, uh, it's not going to be able to capture all those jitters. It's just going to do like a interpolation from point A to point B. So you, you might be able to see it. Maybe uh, it's just, it's going to be a little bit weird. I might have to change this buffer so that you can see it a bit better. But after we do that, we're then going to say, let's go to the new position. And then we are going to apply our stroke just like this. And then after we do that, we can come down here and say, set the new position to the current one, just like that. Uh, the best thing about GitHub Copilot is it's also writing my comments for me now, I guess. So I don't even need to do that anymore. <laughs> uh, but okay, we now have our draw data. Uh, of course, what happens on the remote? So down here, we have the ability to uh, check all of these different events. And if we get down here and we don't have any events, we then wanna call a method I'll draw remote data. Okay, and now we're gonna grab this remote data and we're just gonna create this method. We'll just come up here below the draw data, say draw remote data. Uh, and the reason why we have two separate versions here is because we are gonna be modifying the context in the same way, just like before. Uh, but then we are also going to be modifying the uh, last X and the last Y. And what's gonna happen is as this grows, you're gonna have more things where you need to modify and it starts to become a pain to pass in all these parameters. So I just, I just separated them out because you're gonna wanna change how some of this logic works as well. Uh, but at this point we should, in theory, be good to go. Uh, let's go ahead and let's test this. So come over here, refresh, refresh, draw somewhere somewhere else and now you can see we have that working so let's take a look at what i meant by the uh the time real quick so let's set this to like uh let's say maybe 1000 so this will be a full second of uh, delay between draws so if i do something like this you'll see that this should just try to guess what this uh what this timer is maybe i have to draw a bit more so let me there we go so you can see where it tries to guess what the uh, difference is it's like drawing lines between the two points, which is an interesting thing. I guess you could even take this and like uh, maybe turn this into a game where someone draws a really detailed drawing and then the other person just gets some lines between them. Uh, but yeah, I just, I just thought I'd share that. So that's why we keep it a little bit lower. Uh, that way it is like semi real time. It is estimated, but it allows you to draw a little bit more detailed. But yeah, that's going to do it for this tutorial. Uh, I do have plans for a more detailed drawing system with like, you know, canvas buttons where you can clear it, change your pen tool, etc., and have more users and a bit more performance out of it. I just wanted to cover this as like an intro primer. So hopefully this is interesting. Hopefully this is helpful. And hopefully I will see you in the next tutorial.